So good morning everyone and thanks everybody for being here. Uh, this is a wonderful, beautiful day that God has blessed us with. Um, we're very excited about these renovations and before we get started, we'd just like to have a, a word of prayer. And so I'd ask uh, Mr. Corey Stewart or Coca-Cola if he could come up and start us off with a word of prayer. Thanks. Our Father, we come now thanking you for the gift of fun and fellowship, for the gift of safety of this gathering. We thank you for this staple in the community. We thank you for every partner, every person, every official, every employee who has worked so hard to make this happen. We know that wonderful experiences will be had here. We know that, that kids will learn so much about wildlife here that kids will be able to, to, to tell their friends just about a wonderful experience that the zoo was. We thank you that this wonderful piece of economic development has been placed in an area that is so needed. We also know that every child who will enter this place, every adult will leave with no accidents. They will be safe, every animal will be safe. And we thank you for this moment. And we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you, Corey. Really appreciate those words and that prayer. And so, are you guys as excited as I am this morning? For those of you who do not know me, I'm Corey Wilson. I'm the superintendent of Breck. Um, I would not be here without the support of a lot of people, and I'm going to try and recognize as many of them as I can. I don't believe the governor's here. Is the governor here? I don't think he's up. And so we'll start with Senator Barrow. Senator Barrow, let's give her a round of applause. She's a big supporter of ours. Also in this, um, we're also in State Representative Barbara Carpenter's district. Let's give her a round of applause. Um, we're in Councilwoman Banks's district. Let's give her a round of applause. We also have Councilmember Moak, who's here. Let's give him a round of applause. We have Councilmember, and I'll make sure I say it right, uh, D. Virgilio. Yes, I got it right. All the way from Zachary, we have Mayor McDavid here supporting us. Give him a round of applause. We have State Representative Barbara Freiberg rep uh, supporting us today as well. Councilwoman Denise Amoroso, I believe I saw her. Uh, I'm about to get in trouble now. And so in terms of uh, those council people, they, they help put together a fantastic board at BREC. Uh, and so I'd like to recognize members of our board who are here, uh, starting with our chairman, Mr. Kenneth Pointer. We have our longest serving board member, Mr. Rossi Washington here. The mayor's appointee, Ms. Trina Hall, is here. Let's give it up for our, our Baton Rouge Police Chief, Chief Morris, is here with his family. We have Julie Baxter, who's also with the mayor's office, representing the mayor. We have Ms. Joyce Burgess in the crowd, I understand. Let's give her, hey, how you doing? School board member. We have, I believe, Ms. Jill Kidder in Visit Baton Rouge, as well as Ms. April Hartthorn with the Baton Rouge North Economic Development District. Let's give them a round of applause. And who, who, who 
Any representatives, elected officials, appointed that I forgot, just wave your hand. We'll let you in the zoo free today. <laughs> oh, you mean I got everybody? Wow. <laughs> Look, I also like to recognize all the Baton Rouge Zoo Foundation board members. They're a big part of why we're here today. If they can wave, if you're a member of the Baton Rouge Zoo Foundation board, just wave your hand. I think I saw Narisha Kurtz is here. Hey, Narisha, let's give her a round of applause. Any other Baton Rouge Zoo Board Foundation members? Special shout out to Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola um, provided $275,000 for our Coca-Cola Train Express, which I'm very excited about, but unfortunately is not in operation today. So. You'll, you'll have to come back next weekend to, to ride that. Uh, and so uh, we have both Roderick and Brian in the audience with Coca-Cola, as well as Corey, who gave that great prayer. And so I'm just so happy to see so many of you. This is the first phase of the zoo that we're celebrating. Uh, these improvements represent a significant milestone in our community. Uh, phase one included the new pygmy hippo, where you can see the hippo swimming underwater, a renovated J.S. Clark golf course, um, which, is which we celebrated last year, in addition to this beautiful new zoo entry building that we're gathered here this morning to celebrate. We'll also celebrate the Bayou Promenade, this trail that connects the front of the zoo to the waterfront over at Greenwood Community Park. We'll do that at 1.30, and then we'll be celebrating our latest and greatest playground here at Greenwood Community Park at 4.30. Our mission here at Breck is to enhance the quality of life in East Baton Rouge Parish by providing exceptional parks, open spaces, and recreational experience that contribute to a healthier and more vibrant community. This project has been a long time coming, and we can't wait to kick off the next phase of Greenwood Zoo Master Plan. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Assistant Superintendent of System Planning, Construction, Mr. Reed Richard, who oversees this project, along with many others across the parish. Reed? Thank you, Corey. Um, this is indeed a very big day, and we really ordered up some fantastic weather for it. Um, it's, be patient, because I'm also going to be thanking a lot of people here. Um, so this has been a six-year journey to get here. It all began in 2018, which is six years ago, um, in the development of the master plan for the entire park and the zoo, including J.S. Clark Golf Course. And so there is a lot of people to thank who've been working on master planning and designing this project, managing it and building it. Um, we're talking hundreds of people. I'm not gonna name that many people, but um, there's a whole list of people and companies that I think is most important to mention. First of all, the prime design, prime design team for this entire project, Sasaki Associates. We have them here today, uh, Josh and um, Zach, Anna and Lon. Um, they, uh, they won the uh, selection back in 2018, and um, they're in from Boston and also Colorado. Um, Torre Design Consortium Lim Limited, they are the, the zoo designers. They design this fantastic building. Um, and of course, a 300-acre project of this magnitude involves a, a, involved not only a park, a golf course, and a zoo, but a huge network of underground infrastructure. All of this requires a large team of sub-consultants and construction managers who've made this possible over the past six years. So if you guys are here, please wave your hands, all who have worked on this project. So some of the, uh, some of the uh, sub-consultants included CSRS, civil engineers here in Baton Rouge, Carbo Landscape Architects, Victura Traffic Engineering, Tillet Lighting and Design, AST Mechanical and Electrical and Plumbing Engineers, Julian Structural Engineers, Coastal Environments who did the environmental permitting and the e ecological restoration, 
And of course, the Lemoyne team, uh, they were the project managers and they were the general contractors for this project and they've been wonderful to work with and they're, they're represented here today. I believe Clint is here, um, kind of the project manager. Mike Lemoyne, the uh, um, principal in charge, couldn't be here today. But all the Lemoyne team, if you could wave, wave your hands. Um, been a fantastic back in the back. And lastly, I want to recognize my hardworking and dedicated staff, Angela Harms. Where are you, Angela? Angela, um, she's been the project manager since day one, keeping everyone in line. She's been the day-to-day -day problem solver and the air traffic controller on Breck's side. Um, she's probably generated about 10,000 emails over the past uh, five years. Uh, Stephen Lumpkin with um, our uh, planning and engineering team and also Tony Pilata and Ron LaFosse. Twyla Smith, Lyra Davis, from the, also from the planning and engineering team, and Olin Crow and his Breck construction crews, and um, of course, Jim and Kim. They've uh, been happy campers during this entire time, at least at face value. And uh, Dr. Lawson and the park operations team, thanks so much. And so I'm gonna pass it back to Corey. Thanks, Reed. Appreciate everything you've done to make this vision of the community become a reality. And so next, I'd like to introduce the person who's responsible uh, for this facility, our director of the Baton Rouge Zoo, Mr. Jim Fleshman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Corey's too tall. Well, I'm glad everybody's here. It's my honor to welcome you to this new building. Um, this has been a long day coming. Uh, three years, 10 months, and 10 days. But we're not counting. Uh, today's celebration is really a milestone for, for Brex Baton Rouge Zoo. Um, it took a lot of people, as you heard, and uh, uh, we appreciate everything they've done. Uh, I've got some people to thank as well and recognize. Uh, I would like to recognize Superintendent Wilson um, Assistant Superintendent of System Planning, Reed Richard and his team. And really, every director at BREC and their staff had, had their hand in this project at some point. They were, they were doing some additional work. They were pushing a paper across for a contract or paying a bill or doing something. So they've really done, it's been a big team effort. So I appreciate everything that those department directors have done. Um, BREC commission members, the um, Zoo Advisory Committee members that are here, and also the uh, Baton Rouge Zoo Foundation staff and their board members. We appreciate everything they do for the zoo. And I would also like to, to acknowledge past zoo leadership for all their dedication and support uh, to the community and to the zoo. It's really kind of special for us. The, um, the biggest people I need to thank, though, I think are the zoo staff. They've done a fantastic job. If you see somebody in a, in a polo that has the zoo's logo on it, give them a hug. Um, they, they've really, they're rock stars in what they do and what they get done. I really appreciate everything they do. Um, they had to deal with shifting sidewalks, construction fence, daily changes in the operations and how we do things. And the last people I need to thank are the zoo guests that came through, those that stayed with us throughout the three years. Uh, they would come and see the progress even though it was incremental. Uh, they had to deal with the exact same thing, so we really do appreciate their support. This new entry complex and the new exhibits and the updated exhibits uh, really are a testament to, to the mission of connecting people with wildlife and wild places. It, it is really something special to see. Um, we also have uh, our, our upcoming phases that we're going to be practicing. Um, that we're going to be put into to fashion. Uh, the new phase two and three will focus on developing inter interactive immersive exhibits that are going to be from regions around the world. And the whole goal with this is to actually strengthen the commitment and connection to the community, the connection with animals, and the connection with nature. So we appreciate you all being out here and enjoy yourselves today. 
and I'm going to kick it back over to Corey. Um, thank you, Jim. I appreciate all your leadership throughout this entire project. Uh, next, representing uh, Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom, who had a previous conflict. She's going to join us at the 130 celebration. I'd like to introduce uh, her chief of staff, Ms. Julie Baxter, to come up and say a few words on behalf of the mayor's office. Thank you so much, Superintendent. And uh, this is a project that's very near and dear to the mayor's heart, so she will be here later today for one of the other ribbon cuttings. But we just wanted to say we wanted to bring something to the party. So a few months ago, we broke ground on Thomas Road and the improvements there. That's part of Move EBR. It's part of the access to this new uh, zoo and all of the increased amenities that are going to be here. We're so thankful for your support of Move EBR. And we also have the sidewalks and the bike paths and all of that that will be coming in. So we want to make sure that everyone has really good access to the zoo and to be able to improve the quality of life. So just thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the zoo. My favorite animal is the giraffe. So I hope some of you have a favorite animal that you're going to go see. So make sure you say hi to all of them. Give them lots of love and support the zoo often. Thank you so much for being here. And I wanted to introduce uh, Senator Barrow. Senator Barrow will come next to, to speak. Good morning, everyone. Are you excited? Yeah. I am super excited. Let me hear your excitement. Yeah. This has been a long time coming, and I'll tell you, uh, there are just no words to really express how excited I am. I will continue to commit to ensure that this zoo remain and that those plans that Corey has shared with me in terms of what they would like to see done, I will do all that I can do while I'm still in office to ensure that they are done. We deserve to have a place where our children can have fun, they can be safe, and they can learn. And so this is the place. So I would like to join everyone else in thanking those who have made this possible thus far. Uh, Corey, his wonderful staff, the partners, the developers. I want you to know that this is a partnership. And we can only achieve this by working together. So again, congratulations and thank you. And now I will introduce Representative Barbara Carpenter, my friend in goodness. Good morning. Good morning. This is so personal to me because not only is this my district, I'm just 10 minutes away where I live. And so growing up, I would go to the zoo, take my kids to the zoo. It's just personal. And so I was in the fight from the very beginning when the talk was to move the zoo to another part of town. And I said, that's not going to happen. This is on pristine land, beautiful place in East Baton Rouge Parish, and it's just a wonderful place to get here. I'm one of those who drove through here every Sunday to just check it out, see what was going on next. I couldn't get past the barricades, but I would get out and peep. And then I had the privilege of looking at some of the uh, events inside and some of the planning as a group. So this is a place that we can all be proud of. I want to thank the superintendent uh, of Breck and the superintendent of the zoo and all of its, the staffs, of both of them, for making this such a marvelous day. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day a lot of people, and they're still coming. And so that is the one thing Senator Barrow and I, which is also her senatorial district, have talked about doing something special for the kids in East Baton Rouge Parish uh, soon. Right, Senator Barrow? Yes, absolutely. And so we will get with the leadership and make that happen. Once again, thank you so much for coming, and I love seeing all of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to um, all of those ladies, certainly Julie Baxter on behalf of uh, Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom and Representative Barrow, uh, Senator Barrow, Representative Carpenter. Um, they all were instrumental in making sure the zoo remained at its current location. 
Uh, so let's give them a round of applause again. Also very instrumental in that discussion, <coughs> excuse me, um, Councilwoman Shauna Banks, she's joined us and I'd like her to come up and give a few words. I know she's as excited as everyone else here. Councilwoman. Good morning, everyone. If you don't believe in a miracle, then you don't believe because this is absolutely a miracle. When the discussion about moving the zoo came about, it was a one woman show. And it was hard because it was hard because people did not believe that we could do something in this community so monumental. Oftentimes there has to be a lot of mess for good things to come. If you think about a chicken hatching, it's not pretty when you go get those eggs. When you even think about childbirth, there's a lot of blood, a lot of other things that happen with the newness of a newborn baby. That is what here at the new Baton Rouge Zoo represents. It re represents the blood, the sweat, the sleepless nights that made it almost impossible that we be denied. There are two people here that have not, that two persons that were instrumental from the beginning. And that is Davis Rohr, who, was rep, who represented the mayor on the Brent Council. Davis spoke up at those Brent meetings about the importance of a zoo. The other is a name that you probably will never hear in a history book, and it's Becky Bond. Becky Bond was part of our Keep the Zoo at its current location. She was always on Facebook. She began, also worked for uh, Darnell Waits, the Mayor Baker, and we lost her to cancer early this year. Those are the two persons that aren't here. I also want to talk about how important it is for us to be a city parish. And when we talk about city parish, we're talking about the city of Zachary, the city of Central, the city of Baton Rouge, and the city of Baker. This project, to keep the Baton Rouge Zoo at its current lo location, came from the political will, and the only political will, of four mayors in each of those cities. For the first and only time in the history of East Baton Rouge Parish, we had Zachary Mayor David McDavid. We had then Central Mayor Junior Shelton. We had current Mayor Sharon Weston Bloom. And we had current Mayor Darnell Waits, all standing hand in hand with myself, the NBR Blue Co Commission, and several, you'll never believe it, the, the Central Board of Commerce, standing together hand in hand, because we knew that now when we make decisions, they have to, have to be based on not our current situation, but our future, our future um, commitments to the, the well-being of our community. I'm not going to take long, but I think these people deserve to have their names called out. I think it's important because this is the groundwork of how we get other things, like our grocery store in Scotlandville. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I would be remiss if that, because of course, it's one thing to keep a zoo, but it's another thing to build one. Jim Fleshman and Corey Wilson, y'all, they are dynamic. They are what you call stellar representation of public service. I didn't understand none of the plans, because I just don't understand plans like that, on, on, you know, architectural. But this is something that I couldn't imagine. All I knew is we deserved it. So I am thankful for God. I have my pastor here. It was important that Pastor Aramore with Westgate Bank, be, West uh, Gate Church in Port Allen be here because there were many nights and many days 
that I had to go to the altar because I thought we were going to lose this zoo. And they were there, he would encourage me. So for him, I want to thank you, Pastor, Pastor Al. And thank you all for being here. I'm not going to hold it up. I'm ready for the ribbon cutting. Thank you, Councilwoman Banks, and certainly uh, appreciate you recognizing uh, former Commissioner Davis Rohr, as well as Ms. Uh, Becky Bond, who are not, no longer here with us. Uh, one more person, you know, we take zip codes of people who come through the zoo, and uh, one of the highest in terms of attendance is the city of Zachary. So we'd like to ask their mayor, Mayor McDavid, to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Corey, so much for that. Uh, like you said, you know, Zachary's one of the, the highest attending uh, residents in, uh, in this area to attend the zoo. And as a child coming up, you know, attending the zoo here uh, through school events, and then as I got older, the grandkids and that, and walking around here, it means a lot to me. Uh, you know, I'd like to introduce my CAO, uh, Brandy Trish, who's here. Our Zachary Chamber of Commerce, Chloe McCleary and her husband, Mike and also our councilwoman, Amber D. Virgilio, and her family. I'm so excited with so much potential we have here with this new zoo and uh, the growing and what they have planned for the years down the road, the economic development plans and the, the, uh, the excitement for the kids from schools to attend here, but also corporate events, family events is gonna be out the roof here. And traveling all over the world, I've seen many zoos and I think we have a rival here to any zoo in the United States that we're gonna have here. And I think this is a plus for the parish, but also a plus for the state. Yes. And I think this is very, very awesome. All the people that worked hard, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. My mother has worked for Breck for over 50 years and still works for them. She's 83 years old. And this means a lot you know, to be a part of Breck and, and be a part of this thing. So thank y'all very much. I'm excited, I hope you are too, thank you. Uh, I think uh, next up will be Chief T.J. Morse from Baton Rouge City Police Department. Thank y'all very much, uh, Chief T.J. Morse, Baton Rouge Police Department. Uh, when I think about the zoo and just Breck in general, I think about family and I think about time to be able to be together. So I'm here with my family. We come out to uh, come and see what it is. We actually got a sneak peek a few weeks ago, and so it's amazing. I'm looking forward to the ribbon cutting to be able to go out there. Thankful for uh, the Baton Rouge Police Department's partnership with Breck and all the g good activities we're able to do together um, in Baton Rouge, and I'm just very excited for today. Thank y'all very much. And so thanks to everyone who participated on uh, today's agenda. And so look, this is the way uh, government is supposed to work, right? Um, the citizens tell us what they want. The citizens support us. We deliver what they want. And then we get to celebrate this wonderful facility. Um, this is a very important year for Breck. Um, over 65% of our budget is on the ballot on November 5th. And we want to continue doing great things for this community. Are we a perfect organization? No, we're not a perfect organization. And not, neither am I a, a perfect man. But we are working towards that perfection. We do a lot of wonderful things in this community. And you, we would not have this beautiful facility in behind of us that we've spent over $50 million on if for some reason we weren't taking care of your tax dollars properly. So I just want to encourage you to let you guys know that Breck is good stewards of your dollars and we're doing what you want to see done with your dollars. And so I just want you to remind you on November 5th, we need your support. I've said enough. We got another ribbon cutting at 1.30. The mayor is going to join us there. And then at 4.30, we're cutting the ribbon again over at the playground. But now, let's cut the ribbon on this one. All right, on three, we're going to cut. One, two, three. Yeah, so we're celebrating the improvements to Greenwood Community Park and the Baton Rouge Zoo. Uh, it's the first phase of a $200 million project, but we just finished about $50 million of improvement right here in the 
North Baton Rouge Baker area. You know, we had a big discussion about the location of the zoo back in 2018. And once the community came to us and said they want to keep it at the same location, we immediately got to work and started master planning. But then we were hit with COVID and a lot of other things that escalated the prices and we had to reduce the cost on some things. But uh, it's a four or five, almost six year timeline, but we're glad to be celebrating today. We got about 10 new exhibits. We got this brand new, wonderful new building in the back of us. Uh, now the front of the zoo is right next to Greenwood Community Park. And so a lot of great things to be happy about. Come on out and check the zoo. Um, it's a wonderful place where you can get some exercise, some education, learn about different parts of the world. Uh, but now is a great time to come. And very soon the train will be riding. And I know folks like to ride the train. So come out and enjoy your zoo. It took three years, 10 months, and five days. And, uh, it, it's taken a while. This is just phase one of the zoo's uh, master plan. And so this is the culmination of a lot of people coming together to keep the zoo in, in uh, Greenwood Park and then building uh, the efforts to create a world-class zoo. So we're slowly getting there. Um, most of the, the four main objectives for this project were um, earn AZA accreditation, that's from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, create exceptional guest experiences, and have the, the highest standards of animal care, and to create a world-class zoo. And so we've got the first three done, so it's check, check, check and we're working on that last one of the world class zoo. Those, that's gonna have, have let us, with phases two and three, will really kind of push us over the top. Sure, the, the 50 million was not just for the zoo, it was also in Greenwood Park. So there's a brand new playground, there's a brand new bayou promenade, which is designed to actually have bio swells in it so it will retain water. And it's part of being a good neighbor to try to help protect the, the, the subdivisions around Greenwood Park. And then we also, they redid a J.S. Clark golf course. And so that's been getting a lot of play lately. So the, the full amount went through the whole thing. But most of the stuff, the infrastructure was so old, going back into the 40s, that we had to replace a lot of stuff underground. And so we split up uh, storm drains and sewer lines, um, added new water lines, fiber. We brought natural gas into, into the park. And so all of this was try to put the, the bolts in place so that we can have more stuff done in the future and ideally reduce that cost as we move forward a little bit. But whenever you start building anything, money starts adding up quick. Well, we've got scheduling the master plan phase two and three. And phase two right now in our plan is to finish Africa. So we want to finish the region. So to start with, we're changing from a taxonomic design method to a zoogeographical. And what that means is we're just going to take people to different regions of the world and highlight those, those animals, the history of those places, and the rich cultures. So uh, phase two will be most it will try to have gorillas and African lions will be the anchor species. And then a chafalaya will be more of, a, of an aquarium feature. So the only way you can really tell the story of a chafalaya is to get people underwater and then really get into the history and the rich cultures that have been found around, around that swamp. And, and that's really the goal for it. If we can do those two things, I think you know, we're gonna be, we'll be off the map. The Bayou Promenade is designed to engage visitors with the national with the natural environment, offering opportunities to learn about local ecosystems while enjoying a peaceful and picturesque walk. At this time, I'd like to bring up our assistant superintendent, Mr. Reed Richard, who has been instrumental in overseeing this project and many others across the parish. Reed? Oh. Thank you, Corey, and thanks to everyone. This is our second ribbon cutting of the day, and for those who attended the first, I might be repeating some of the things, but um, again, this is, um, it's a little hotter right now than it was this morning, but um, uh, I'll, I'll try and be short. Um, it, this, was, this is a project that's been in the making for the past five years, since 2018. Um, it's, a, it's a 300 acre project it's it's the, it's the zoo it's the park it's it was a nine hole js clark golf course um, one of the main goals that we wanted to do was create synergy between the park and the zoo and um, as as people from baton rouge know the the zoo you entered from thomas road and um, a lot of people that went to the zoo over the years never knew the park existed and vice versa so now they share the same front door off of Highway 19. We hope to extend the entry drive all the way to Levy Lane, um, potentially um, next year. And, um, but going back to the connectivity and the synergy between the two, that's what this promenade was all about. 
was was a journey from the uh, from the zoo entry building to the park and the waterfront and the fabulous playground that we'll be having a ribbon cutting for later this afternoon. And um, right next to you here is is Bayou, Cypress Bayou. That's actually part of a, a of a green infrastructure project that we're implementing uh, throughout our projects. This is a uh, one of the main hallmarks that we've done so far to help reduce flood risk. And um, what, what was done is that uh, Cypress Bayou, if you knew before, is mostly a channelized um, ditch. Now it's returned, we returned it to its historic meanders. It's lengthened. Uh, we laid back the slopes, um, planted a lot of native grasses and wildflowers. And so when you look up out on that, it's, 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 not, it's not weeds. It, those are intentional plantings. And um, uh, so as they grow in, they'll help they'll help choke out the uh, the invasives and the weeds. And uh, so, yeah, they slowing down the water, creating flood risk reduction, will actually be starting a phase two next, next year, which will be Cypress Bayou going all the way to Lady Lane. We're gonna be dredging the lake, um, deepening it, expanding it for more flood risk reduction, but that, the residual effects of that will be um, more recreational opportunities as well. It's going to be very aesthetically pleasing. Um, and uh, so I, I can't, uh, can't say enough for the team who's been involved with this over the past five years. Um, Sasaki Associates, Josh Brooks, Zachary Christgo, uh, Lon, Anna Kors. Um, it's been such a long project that um, Anna and Josh weren't parents when it started, but now they have uh, two twins that are about to start kindergarten. Um, and uh, the Lemoyne team, the general contractors and, and, and construction managers, um, and their huge staff of subcontractors. There's been a, a, a tremendous amount of subconsultants, um, Carbo landscape architects. I see Amy is here, Wave, and, and yeah, all the, all the Sasaki team, Wave. Um, my, uh, my, my staff has been tremendous as well, and I think that they are probably are walking through the zoo right now with their kids, but I would like to thank Angela Harms, who was the, the project manager since day one on this project. She did a tremendous job, and um, my right-hand person, and, and just air traffic controller, Tony Pallotta. I see Adam Worth here. Raise your hand, Adam. Um, he also contributed, and, and the park operations staff, um, just a whole in, in our capital construction division. So it was a, a, a just a, a challenging experience, but this is this is a tremendous day. So thank you all for coming. Well, thank you, Reed, for your leadership throughout this six year long project. And thank you to the Walls uh, Project, who's helped with murals all across the entire parish in our park system. Now I'm pleased to introduce Mayor President of East Baton Rouge Parish. Uh, Sharon Weston Broom. She's been instrumental in this project from the beginning. She's always a big supporter of Breck. And so whether it's her grandkids playing soccer or her dogs playing in the dog park or she's just walking on a trail, uh, she's a big supporter of Breck and I'd like to invite her up to say a few words. Thanks. Thank you, Superintendent. And thank you to everyone here, all of the elected officials that are here. As I was uh, coming here today, I started uh, thinking about Langston Hughes' poem, uh, A Dream Deferred. But this is the manifestation of a dream occurred here with this uh, zoo, with the park, and everything that's going on here today. And uh, I will definitely have to uh, thank, as I said, all of the elected officials here today. Um, in particular, I have to give a shout out to Councilwoman Banks, who's been an enormous advocate uh, for the zoo, for this park. And I remember five years ago when we fought the good fight to make sure that this wonderful esteemed facility remained in this wonderful esteemed community. So I am extremely uh, grateful today to see the phases unfold, Superintendent. And as you said, Reed, it is a tremendous day uh, here. Uh, you know, Reed and I had the opportunity, and I'll be brief because I know it's hot. Reed and I had the opportunity to go to the Netherlands um, back in 2018, maybe. And um, when he was talking about 
um, the bayou here. Um, that's one of the things that we learned to use bio swells. Am I saying that correctly? Um, to help with the mitigation of water. And so we know that water management is a big issue for this city and for this parish. And so everything that we do, and I'm glad Breck is taking a leadership with this park, we have to, Mayor Waits, think about uh, water. And Corey, we have to think about everything being a sponge to absorb that uh, water. So I'm very glad to see that we're moving in the right direction. And I just want to thank everyone who has worked hard to make this a reality, the team at Breck, the Baton Rouge Zoo staff, and all the partners and supporters. This investment in the zoo is about more than just enhancing its facilities. It's really about enriching, enriching the lives of citizens throughout our parish. And so thank you once again to everyone who contributed to this remarkable project. And I look forward to seeing uh, the continued growth and the involvement of the other phases as we talk about the Baton Rouge Zoo and as we talk about this wonderful park. Welcome to Bayou Promenade. Thank you, Mayor Broom. You know, this project was one that was um, supported by all the mayors in the parish in terms of keeping the zoo at its current location. Um, along with Mayor Broom, um, right by her side, uh, making sure that the zoo, as well as the park, remained here was uh, Mayor Darnell Waits. And this park is our largest community park. It's uh, uh, has over 600 acres and is uh, the, the front door of, of Baker. And so uh, Reed talked about all of the stormwater benefits and the flood risk reduction. And since the zoo is surrounded or this park is surrounded by Baker, it, it directly uh, benefits those citizens. So I'd like to introduce, or not introduce, but certainly welcome uh, Darnell Waits to come up and say a few words. Well, good afternoon, you guys. Now, I will be really, really, really quick. Um, as I listen to Mayor Broom talk, and I'm standing next to uh, Metro Councilwoman Banks, I remember those battles. Um, and so, Councilwoman Banks was in the middle of that for this area here. And Mayor Broom got in the middle of it and brought all the mayors together. She she always talked about the mayors came, but she called the mayors, brought us together. And it was the first time ever that all the mayors came together and they agreed on something, which lets me know that at that particular time, it was supposed to happen. So let's give Mayor Broom and, 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 and Metro Councilman Shauna Banks a didn't quit. Now, I remember that when Shauna was doing this, there was a young lady with her that's, that came to work for me after this. Her name was Becky Bond. She played a big part in this, too. She passed away this year. Let's celebrate her real quick. She did a, a really good job, her and Shauna. And so I'm thankful for the Breck staff and Corey and everything that's going on. But I always say we can do more together, and the future is really bright for this area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. And so, yeah, the, we, we can do a lot of great things together. Um, the future is bright here in East Baton Rouge Parish and certainly in North Baton Rouge. Um, in November, we, along with Mayor Broom, are, are, we're on the ballot. And it's, it's really the biggest year in Breck's history. Over 65% over of our budget um, is, is on the line. And we were able to do these great improvements with the input from the community and ultimately being good stewards of those tax dollars so that we were able to invest in this area and we want to continue doing that and so we just want to remind everybody how important it is on november 5th that they get out and cast their vote and so with that said i'd like to introduce i'd like to bring everybody up so that we can cut the ribbon three two one. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you can cut this back up. <laughs> <laughs>